Hello, my name is Sam Akenbauer with Alex Liu, and we are here to present Making Space for Cultural Infrastructure, the breakdown maintenance work of independent movie theaters during crisis, a work that discusses the mandatory closure of independent movie theaters during the COVID-19 pandemic and their attempts at digital maintenance and repair. By way of background information, I'd like to discuss independent movie theaters generally. These theaters are part of the local cultural infrastructure as spaces invested in the reproduction and dissemination of knowledge and culture with a focus on community-driven art-forward messaging. During the COVID-19 pandemic, movie theaters were mandated to close in the U.S. in late March 2020. This led to confusion among patron communities and staff alike. Within a night, independent theaters that were significant in their localities as spaces of community and arts engagement were no longer able to engage with patrons or generate revenue. The question for independent theaters became, how do we maintain our community and distribute films and therefore generate revenue? And how do we repair the broken cultural infrastructure in the wake of this global crisis? Therefore, our work extends insights into cultural infrastructure during times of crisis, the invisible infrastructure and work done by human actors, and the difficulty of maintaining and repairing engagement through alternative material means. In particular, this work investigates the following research questions. What are the socio-technical practices of maintaining broken cultural infrastructure during crisis? How do these maintenance practices shift the symbolic and material dimensions of cultural infrastructure? And how does this shift affect the outcomes of maintenance work? We conducted research into the theater's attempted maintenance by administering a survey with 42 theaters and semi-structured interviews with 18 theater staff representing 18 different theaters in 12 states in the US. Independent movie theaters felt the burden of the pandemic immediately as the closure of their physical spaces effectively disrupted revenue and broke down their roles as facilitators of community engagement and presenters of art through the medium of film. This breakdown was felt as furloughs and layoffs affected most surveyed independent movie theaters and participants feared that these layoffs would signal a brain drain of committed individuals who had institutional knowledge. Additionally, during the reopening, there was confusion as to how to reopen safely and an active resistance to pandemic policies by members of the community. Members of the community who were both committed to the theaters and most at risk during the pandemic were also hesitant to return. Throughout our engagement with independent movie theaters, we found that these theaters employed similar practices to maintain and repair cultural infrastructure. In physical spaces, Independent theaters began partnering with community businesses to provide screenings outside the theater space where distancing was possible. However, issues of cost, limited profits, and excessive coordination efforts led to maintenance efforts through socio-technical means. To maintain the theater's core role in distributing cultural artifacts, independent theaters had to opt into new virtual cinema systems created by film distributors. Each of these video-on-demand streaming platforms was made by a single distributor, and each platform had films exclusively from that distributor. Virtual cinema systems allowed independent film distributors to release new and repertory films through independent theaters' respective websites, while patron administration was split 50-50 between film distributor and independent theater. 90% of survey respondents reported using virtual cinema systems within the first four months of the pandemic. The virtual cinema systems maintained an illusion of the theatrical experience, but still there were prominent tensions. Each system had its own design leading to issues of navigation. This combined with streaming and purchasing issues led to independent theater staff being de facto troubleshooting agents for a confused public. Perhaps due to these issues, the systems were not successful and did not present significant revenue. Not surprisingly, Theaters turned to social media platforms to engage with community members and present events that would have taken place in their offline space, like trivia, but on Facebook Live, or question and answer sessions, but on Twitter. 95% of respondents said their use of social media platforms had increased during the pandemic. However, engagement was not as prevalent or robust as engagement that would have taken place in the theater space, and independent theater space. Uh, staff had difficulty keeping their audiences engaged with questions of what to discuss being pervasive. These attempts at maintenance tried to replicate the materiality of independent theaters as part of the local cultural infrastructure. However, the materiality of an offline independent theater is very different from the aforementioned online digital spaces like a social media space or the virtual cinema systems. 
To maintain each interaction, an offline space allows for independent theater staff and community patrons had to take on additional labor in navigating multiple online spaces. For instance, information acquisition, arts engagement, and community engagement needed to each be recreated and reworked digitally on different sites, leading to issues with divided attention, multiple pressure points for further breakdown, and attendance drop-off. Furthermore, the physical space of the independent theater is also symbolically tied to its specific community and the people therein. As such, the theater space is often a symbolic cultural historical marker for community's collective memory. In other words, it is a space in which cultural ideas, special engagements, and memories are exchanged, and we can see the space itself as a non-human actor in the network of cultural dissemination, circulation, and engagement. Overall, despite attempting to maintain the illusion of screening films and being centers for engagement in this new online space, theaters discuss their online maintenance as being ineffective. The above issues speak to infrastructuring work done by each independent theater staff. During an already emotionally turbulent time of layoffs and the specter of illness, maintenance efforts were often misaligned with other actors, including patrons and distributors. Independent theater staff and patrons were misaligned on how to reopen safely and misaligned on the significance of the symbolic meanings and materiality of infrastructure. Theater staff and distributors were misaligned on how virtual cinema systems should be designed and implemented. And in addition, theater staff were displaced as technical workers to troubleshoot and maintain digital platforms. In addition, each theater had its own localized value within its distinct community and needed to maintain its situated value within that community. These complicating factors distinguished the various efforts of the theater staff and made the already invisible work more difficult for some locations and some staff. In conclusion, our work unpacks challenges in the maintenance of cultural infrastructure brought about by the misaligned symbolic meanings and materiality of bringing an online space, an offline space online. A focus on maintenance work provides us with an opportunity to question what we want out of these spaces, both online and offline, what benefits technology can bring to the sector, and what additional labor is required of a workforce during times of crisis, maintenance, and repair. Additionally, it is our hope that the paper will inspire future research into cultural infrastructure and answer questions such as, how do cultural inf institutions and spaces come into being? What invisible labor and human involvement is necessary to support such institutions and spaces? Who is doing the infrastructuring work to support individuals and communities' cultural and recreational needs and for whom? And whose culture is included and whose is excluded in the process of infrastructuring? Thank you very much and read our paper for more.